the Impacket Library, this time on Metasploit Minute. Metasploit Minute is brought to you by viewers like you. If you get value from the show and can spare just a dollar, please consider contributing at metasploitminute.com. Hello and welcome to Metasploit Minute, the breakdown on breaking in. I'm your host Rob Fuller, but you can call me Mubix. Today we're actually going outside of Metasploit. Shocker. Um, this is pretty cool. I've been using Impacket for a long time. A lot of the wonderful tools inside, uh, made by Beto. Uh, he is such an amazing guy does a lot of great work for the security community and so I had to talk about his tool because it's one of one of my staples. I always have it installed alongside Metasploit and even get pivoted through Metasploit. So if you haven't looked at all the episodes about pivoting or proxying stuff, go back, look at those episodes, see how you can use Metasploit um, and in pack it together. And we're just going to be talking about installing and using some of the tools and examples inside of Impacket today. So go back, look at that, then come back and watch this. So the first thing you got to do to install and pack it is git clone github.com forward slash core security slash in packet. It's pretty small. It takes a few seconds and it's done. So we go into in packet. The first thing we got to do is actually set up, install it. So Python setup install. It's going to take a few seconds to get done. Now we go into the examples. Now the reason why these are examples is because this is just a library. You can use this library to do amazing things. I've had, I have uh, a ton of scripts that I have written just to use in packets amazing utility in other ways that it has for its examples. But we're going to just look at their, their personal examples that you can get and use yourself. So it's kind of hard to read, but I'm going to highlight this to see if you can see all of the examples here didn't really help. But let's go through some of my favorites. So git ad users, it's pretty straightforward. So Python git ad users, ad users. Now inside of inside of Impacket, some of these are very basic straightforward uh, tools. So git ad users basically queries the target domain for user data. Now why would this be important? Well, if you have a username and password, you can do this as any user on a domain. Let's look at what it gets. So let's follow the long Python get 80 users and we need to give it, let's say, a target. So domain username, that's it. It actually queries the domain for you. So let's say we're going to do sitting duck because that's my domain. Uber user. And then that should be it. The reason why that's not going to work is because it can't actually look up the domain in this current setup because I don't have DNS directly to it. So I'm going to have to give it the DCIP and that's 192.168.80.10. So that should work. But we can also give it a password with a colon. So let's give it this amazingly secure password. Rot row. So it can't find sitting duck because it needs a fully qualified domain. So that's hard to see, but you should be able to kind of zoom in and see what we got. But I'll, I'll just walk you through what this is. So it's the name of the user, the email address, the password last set, and the last logon. So why would this be information that you'd want that you can get as any user on a domain? Uh, password last set, sort, see who that last time someone set a password in 2001 or whatever. Last logon, see if they've ever logged on their username and their email address. So you can take all of this with a single shell. So you drop in, you pivot this through or route it through an interpreter session, you run it against a domain, and then you pull out every single email address for that entire company. That's pretty powerful, right? So even if you don't do anything on that pen test after that, you have every email address to then send more phishing emails in. All right, so let's go to the next script. One of my favorites is get SPN or get user SPNs. So again, what this does is actually gets the SPN or server service principal name of the accounts that have those set up. So this is this is 
called curb roasting. You should talk to Tim Medden. Um, he actually did a DerbyCon talk about this. I, I wrote a few blog posts about this, about curb roasting. Basically what's happening is you're pulling down a ticket, then you're breaking that ticket by attacking the NTLM or the password inside of it, and then you are able to recraft it if you want, or just get the password of that user. Now you have to crack it, it's very slow, but it's pretty powerful when you do. So let's see if we, this domain has any SPNs. So we'll actually just change this part because Beto does an amazing job at keeping everything uniform. We can probably just change that. So no entries found, that's okay. This is just means, this just means that this specific domain that I've set up doesn't have any usable SPNs. Now that doesn't mean that there aren't other avenues of attack, but with most corporations, if they've ever installed MSSQL or a web server like a IIS or anything under a different user, you're probably gonna find SPNs. And this again, standard user level. Generic user can run this. So let's look through all the other ones we got here. Um, ah, of course we have to run secret stump. So Python secret stump is one of my favorites as well. So let's just edit what we have. And we haven't given a target actually. Control C, stop. So in, in secret stump, it actually needs a target to, to, uh, to go against. This one, I'm giving it a domain controller as the DCIP, but I'm not actually giving it a target. So if we look and do secret stump dash H, the target is actually a little bit different than our normal target because it needs a target IP or address or name. It also takes local. So if you've ever done dumping of a domain, you need ntds.dit to do that or DC sync or a bunch of different things. I think we've covered that. If not, we'll have to do that again. But pulling things out of ntds.dit has always been troubling. Like you had to use like EDB uh, things and all of these other different libraries together and you have to do them one by one. Whereas with, with Impacket, you can pull all that down, do it offline, and all you have to do is give it some, the SAM file, the security file, the security, or the system file, and the NTDS, and it does all of the parsing for you. It's great. So we got it. We, we definitely have to secret stump this thing. So secret stump and give it a target. So at is how we do the target. 192.168.10.80.10. Oh, the DCIP isn't really important. And there it goes. So it looks for the remote registry. It's in a stop state. It starts the remote registry, pulls down the SAM file via the remote registry. So this is not injecting into LSAS. It's not causing any instability. It's really great. Pulling the, the administrator password, the guest password. Now, since we're targeting a domain controller, it actually switches into domain dumping. So it automatically sees that it's a domain controller, switches into domain dumping and dumps the domain as well. All right, it's done doing that. One of the things to point out uh, actually, a lot of things to point out here is that if there's any clear text uh, credentials where it says store in reversible encryption, it shows you the password that's set. So no matter how long it is, if as a backdoor, if you want to say, hey, I'm going to set this user as a reversible encryption. Now you have to be a domain admin to get there to pull that out. So it's not really giving you... Uh, it's not really giving you any extra access, but if you have a way to get the domain admin or DC sync, you can set another user as reversible encryption. And then what you can do from there is then have their clear text credential to go other places. So if they use that for XYZ script or whatever, you can, you can get into that. It's pretty, pretty devious. So if we look also in here, we see all the the Kerber, or I'm sorry, AES keys and Kerberos keys. If we scroll up a bit, we can see all of the other, the NTLM hashes for all of these things, the help desk, the I'm, I'm a not an admin. One of the important things I want to point out is this right here. So I don't know if I've talked about it in the past or not, but this domain controller account can DC sync. So what we did just now is synced all of the domain controller, domain passwords. Now, 
This is important because if I'm acting as a domain controller, I can do it again. Now that password is really long and complex and binary, I think it's 255 character binary bits by default, but if I have the NTLM hash, guess what I can do? Let's just do this, just to see. So I'm gonna take the NTLM hash and I'm, I'm gonna finish this up real quick. So let's go like this. Let's say I don't have the password anymore. We say dash H for help. We say hashes. We put that in. I th we say DCIP is 192.168.80.10. Look up just DC. Because the domain controller can only dump so the domain controller account can only dump domain hashes. So if you try to do it without just DC, it's gonna tell you access denied. So just DC, then we do sitting duck dot info forward slash DC, and it was DC one. Let's look and make sure DC one. All right, so DC one, one for backslash dollar at 192.168 80.10. And you can see that it's now dumping the hashes of the domain using the computer account, the domain controller computer account. Now, once you have that, you have the domain computer computer account, it's gonna change. Unfortunately, it's gonna change every 30 days. Now that's a setting inside the domain controller. You can tell it not to change its password. That's a thing. Because the computer is what changes the password. So every computer on a domain changes its password every 30 days. But you can tell it not to. So one of the things as a defender to look for is any computer accounts that haven't changed their password within the last 60 days is conspicuous. If you have any domain controllers at all that haven't changed their password within 30 days, that's a problem. However, as an attacker switching gears, if I have a domain com computer account and I have another domain computer account, they're not gonna change their password on the same day. So if I have a script that dumps it one day, then waits until the computer account, or computer account changes its password and uses the other domain controller's computer account to dump it and then switches back and forth and back and forth, you can pretty much stay with domain admin as long as you want. And it's really hard to tell because you're using the computer, the domain computer's account to do the syncing. That's how Active Directory works. So this time on Metasploit Minute, we talked a little bit about the examples of the Impacket library and what you can do through Metasploit with these libraries because all it's doing is TCP, handshakes and stuff. Um, and we've already talked about routing. So let me know what you think. Do you want more stuff about outside of Metasploit? Email me, msf at hack5.org. And stay tuned to metasploitminute.com for more shows like these. And a huge thanks to everyone who supports the show. If you'd like to support the show directly, head on over to patreon.com forward slash Mubix. Every dollar goes towards making this show even better just for you. I really am grateful for all the support. So next time, until next time, I'm Mubix and I'll be hacking till the cows come home. <laughs>